uh, I wanted to take this from Numbers chapter 21. And this is the bronze serpent. Someone say the bronze serpent. This is the bronze serpent. And I believe that sometimes when we see communion, it's a nice sacrament. It's a nice little part of Christian heritage, maybe Christian tradition. But today I want to challenge us to go back and to make it a renewal of vows. Who here has been married for more than five years? Ten years, keep your hands up. Fifteen years, keep your hands up. Twenty years, keep your hands up. What? Anyone here married 30 years? What, Roxanne? Oh, my gosh. Talisa. Oh, Dr. Stacy, you're right. 33, 40 years. Rama Day. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Our lady. 50 years. Anyone? Okay. Well, we got 40. We got 50? Where's 50? Oh, my gosh. Let's give her a hand. Oh, come on. That's amazing. Look, I, I love generations. I was just talking with Fabian this morning, and uh, we were talking about how marriage has really been attacked. And it's just an honor to have people in the room that have been married that long. So thank you guys for just participating with us. I believe it's part of the fabric of America when marriages are strong, amen, that we actually begin to raise our generations up properly. But I, I believe that God wants to have a renewal of vows. And just like with marriage, sometimes you just need a renewal of vows of vows, of vows, um, to renew your vows with one another, to really return, we're going to say, back to your first love. Amen? I'm going to read the scripture in Revelations 2, verses 2 to 5. It says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and you cannot bear those who are evil, you have t and you have tested those who say they are apostles and who are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. This is Jesus, that you have left your first love. Who has ever found themselves in a place where you've been married, but you don't feel married? <sighs> Thank you for those honest hands. You've been married and sometimes it's like you're living in the same house. You're not like thinking of divorce. You're not thinking she's the enemy. Maybe you are thinking of divorce and she or he's the enemy. Uh, I remember one, my, one, my one pastor said, I, we never discussed divorce, but we discussed murder. <laughs> so my wife and I hold that as a culture code in our family. We're okay with hurting each other, but not ever leaving each other. So... Um, just kidding. But, I, you know, I, I, it says that I want you, you have left your first love. It says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the very first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. I believe that communion was supposed to be a renewal of uh, vows with the Lord, more than it was a nice little sip and cup and a nice pretty prayer. It says, God, I thank you for your blood. Thank you for your body that was broken. That is all part of it. But I believe the renewal of love this morning, God is after that this morning. Can you say, I renew my vows, Lord? This is the scripture that we, we use, a lot of people use in 1 Corinthians 11. It says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he had broken it and said, take, eat. This is my body in which I've broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then the Bible says he took the cup in the same manner and says this is the cup in the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I believe that this morning, God wants to have a renewal of vows with our heart in him, a, a deep inner connection where intimacy is returns. And that comes, the Bible says in Acts 3.19, it says, times of refreshing. We want renewal. He really wants renewal in this place. I believe renewal is on its way. I believe since, you know, since we started Re Global, I believe there's a fire and that God has a fire and he has a place where people are answering the call to stand for the nation, stand for Jesus. And 
biblical principles. But I believe sometimes we can just get into routine. And this morning, we're going to go into taking communion as a renewal of vows. Amen? I wanted to lift your faith as well as increase your conviction this morning with the bronze serpent. And this is Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. And this is the representation of why we remember this, but also why Christ died. We remember. Can you say, I remember? Now, this is the judgment of this world, John 12, 31 to 33. And we're going to read Numbers 21. Now, the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples unto myself. And he said this, signifying by the death he would die. Who has ever heard that? If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men nigh unto you. That's usually in reference to praise. But it is completely out of context. I'm sorry if sacred cows have to die this morning. <laughs> well, he never called them houses of worship. He called them houses of prayer. My house should be called a house of prayer, right? Not worship, right? He, he Jesus, if you know this and don't hate on me, I don't want to look up because I can feel some of the, you know, eyeball stones being thrown at me. But he didn't collect worshipers. He collected followers. I promise to God, ask my wife alone by myself. I'm a worshiper. I worship hours. Like I literally will, <laughs> she's crying now. She's like, oh, last night it was horrible. Okay, so I'm a worshiper. Probably I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most people. I worship God like nothing else. But Jesus never asked people to worship him while he walked this earth. He asked people to follow him. And I believe we've made the culture of the church be around this thing. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men nigh unto me. So you got all these churches that have the most aud audacious praise, but they have the most dirty inward lives. And the, it says Isaiah 29, 13, or Matthew 15, 8, it says these people worship me with their lips, but their heart, their heart. Their heart is far from you. And, and so I believe we've entered into that phase sometimes as a church, even as the body of Christ, and even we're going to say America, where we've worshiped God with our lips, but somehow our hearts have drawn far away from him with our personal application. That means, how does your worship after Sunday? How's it Monday morning? How's your worship Tuesday morning, Wednesday? How's your followership? Because he didn't say, those who love me worship me with their lips. He said, those who love me obey my commands. I don't know if you've had that who here has ever dated a player before? They worshiped you with their lips, but their hearts were far from you. You know, a worship, a player can have many lovers, but they can only have one love. Oh, can I, can I have really quick here, can I have five ladies come up here and my wife? Just five ladies run up on the stage. Is this cool? I want to show you something. This is, I think, well, this, is, this is really what I felt from the Lord, just for the communion here. Is this okay? Now, no, y'all, all the girls get over here. Oh, no, no, Katie, you can stay up here, whatever. Just get over here. Yo, all the, other than my wife, just get over here. So this is, this is how it is, like, hey, Lord, I love you, but, just grab my hand, Kaylee. But I love, I'm not doing anything deep with her. I just love the affection from Kaylee. I love you, but I really love how she cooks for me. I love you, but I really need her emotional affirmation for me. I love you, baby, but boy, I don't know what she does, but she does something good for me. She, I'm trying to come up with, I, I'm trying to be PG this morning, okay? I love you, baby, but man, she really sings over me like no other woman, you know? I love you. See? She, she, she helps me. 
We always come to Jesus, and I believe on Sundays we're like, I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I need my porn on Monday morn. <laughs> Because you're not all that it used to be. But on Sundays I give you praise. Will you marry me? Even though my heart is cold. No. <laughs> Just stay there for a second. I have to read the scripture and then we're going to get into communion. I hope you understand that my heart here. I felt this from the Lord, James 4.4. 4. Who here knows that we're in a relationship, not a religion? If you're into a, prostitute, a prostitution relationship, you can treat your wife however you want and have as many lovers as you want, and you're okay. But if, if you want a real marriage, and you consider it a real marriage, then all these gotta go. Y'all can go. Get out of here. No, I'm just playing. All these got to go. Why? The Bible says that God is a jealous judge. A jealous God, sorry. Let's give my wife a hand too. Okay. <laughs> Bible says God's a jealous God. Hebrews 12, 29 is a consuming fire. But sometimes we believe and we take his love and his grace to being something that's tolerant. He's not tolerant of our extramarital affairs He's jealous. He's not tolerant of extramarital attitudes, right? He's jealous. <laughs> and I just felt the Lord trying to clean our hearts. And we're gonna say clean the house. Because he wants a loyal bride. James 4, 4, it says, you adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with this world, or I'm going to say any way of this world, is making ourselves enemies with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of God, sorry, wants to be a friend of this world, makes himself an enemy of God. I don't know about you, that was the New Testament. Was that the New Testament? That was my New Testament. I don't know what your New Testament says. But I really felt the call of God back to a purity this morning. And that before we take the communion elements, that we have our hearts to the place where they're ready to leave all again and to find his first love, to let go of bitterness and unforgiveness, to let go of maybe sins and lies. And maybe, maybe there is real adultery. Maybe there is sexual immorality. Maybe there is emotional adultery because that's allowed. saying amen. I believe the Lord wants a pure bride. And, you know, I, I know the fire conference, wasn't it out of this world? I believe the Lord started a move here. He did. There's a fire. There was a fire, but there's a greater fire. There's been a greater fire in me ever since the fire conference. Like, I've been like, God's been rubbing up on me every morning. Right in a new way, something phenomenal's happened. But I'll tell you what happened is right after the fire comes, then your old lovers come. And they want to still see if they have your attention. They want to still see if they have your number. I don't know. When I married my wife, I had to defriend all my other girlfriends. I mean, I tried to keep it. I'm just joking. I didn't. She, she wouldn't be tolerant. And if my wife is righteous, you got to know God's more righteous. That it's not legalism, it's jealousy. And he wants your focal attention. And we leave all of our lovers in relationship. And that's what getting saved really is. It's a marriage to God. We're like, God, I'm bowing my knee to everything else. I'm forgetting all of me. And now you are my new way my new life, and my new tribe. And we can't allow competitors. Like I said, even after the fire conference, I, I've said this before, but old habits and new territories invite old enemies. 
old habits and new territories. God just wants us to be connected and stay connected. Can I tell you, there's a fire. Someone say a fire. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. And he wants to turn this place into such a gateway. You heard all the prophecies from Chuck Pierce, prophet Chuck Pierce. Be, uh, Pastor Benny was here. Uh, Evangelist Daniel Chan. It was just really phenomenal. God really laid it out for us. But I believe he wants us to make sure our hearts are always having one woman. We're, God doesn't believe in polygamy. I mean, I thought I was in a Christian church this morning, but God doesn't believe in polygamy. So we have one heart with Christ and one lover. That's what it means to return. So I'm gonna read this. If I be lifted up, he said this, but let me, Numbers 21, verse six says, the Lord sent, who sent? What? The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many of the people of Israel died. Say so he's holy. You know, this is reference in 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Well, 1 Corinthians 10, verses about 7 to 11 and 12, and then it goes into 13 where it says, no temptation has overtaken you. But it talks about, it says, don't complain like they did in the wilderness where God sent the destroyer. Why would it reference that in the New Testament? I believe when we lost the, lost the first love, which is the vision, then we allow complaints to come up. It says, you know, when there's no vision, the people cast off restraints. I believe where there's no vision, people actually start their complaints. And I believe this morning, God's wanting to release us from the sting of death, amen? Come on, this is really good. So the people came to Moses. Many people died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. A lot of people don't believe in the punishment of Jesus anymore. They don't believe in the punishment of God. But you know, you know what Paul says? He says, knowing the love of God, I persuade men. Is that what he says? No, he said, that's, that's America's Bible. It says, knowing the terror of the Lord. Oh, I, love, I preach the gospel. I, sh, I reach people, right? I'm always sharing my faith. But people think because I'm such a cool, cute man. Because I'm so loving. But I'm not. I'm scared for your soul. I'm scared for their soul because I, God's shown me visions of heaven and hell. I'm scared. <laughs> I know that he saved me, but I have a really good respect of what can happen if you lose the fear of God. And this morning, God wants to reunite us with that place where he's God. He's God. He's Father, but he's God. Jesus said, don't fear those. Come on, is this all right? Don't fear those. Don't fear those who can hurt your body. Fear him who can throw your body and soul into the fire of eternal eternity, sorry, right? Jesus said that. So I keep a cord. There's something in me. It's like, who here wants to go bad sometimes, but you can't because you just, you love God? But there's a part of me that fears him as much or more than I love him. Because if I love him, but I don't fear him, oh, he'll come back to me. But if I fear him, I know there can be a place of no return. And I can't challenge the grace of God that's on me just so I can sin. Because I know some of my friends, I've been young and now I'm old, who never returned back to the place of grace, who never got their faith back into alignment because they thought just for a season I would mess around. And I promise you, there's some kind of way that has to be revived in us where we fear God again. And we love him. We come back to that first love, but it's reverence where there's no other lovers allowed. Not on Sundays, not on Mondays, not on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturdays. And not even at midnight on Saturday night, right before church when the devil comes tempting sometimes more than every other time. The fear of God. So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord. Intercede with the Lord that he may remove the serpents from us. 
And Moses interceded for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard that it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks on it, he shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent. Someone say a bronze serpent. Do you know the altar where they, the altar in the, in the uh, tabernacle was bronze? But Jesus, right, this sin, the snake, sorry, was actually this part of the altar that the snake was put on. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, this is in John 3, 13 to 16. Jesus said, I am that serpent, like it was in the wilderness with Moses. He became sin. Someone say, he became sin. So that us who were sinners could become righteous. Second Corinthians, right? 5, 21. That everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, when we bow our knee and repent, we will live. So Moses, Moses sorry, made a bronze serpent and he set it on the stand and it came about that if a serpent bit any man when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. So it's like, what does this have to do with a miracle Sunday? Everything. Do you know the only reason there's a curse, Deuteronomy 28, is because of sin. The only reason there's sickness is because of sin. That doesn't mean your personal sin has brought in sickness. It can. But it means sin in general is the cause for sickness that came into humanity. And when we repent, someone say repent. When I bow my knee and I repent before the Lord for my sin, my adultery, my fornication, my pornography, my lying, even the white lies, my gossiping, even the ones that are righteous, there are none righteous. All the attitudes I bear, when I repent, there's a fresh connection back to the Savior and all that he provides. It says times of refreshing come with repentance. And this morning, I'm asking you to bow your knee. I'm not saying to get on your knees. But this morning, I want you to look inside of your heart. We're going to pass the communion elements, I think, right now. We're going to pass those communion elements. But I want you to take a good minute and I want you to, you can close your eyes, you can look up here, whatever you want, but I want you to get really sincere with the Lord this morning. Say, God, am I at a first love place? Is there any jealousy in my heart? Father, is there any bitterness? Is there unforgiveness? Is there any malice? Old school world, word, ambition that you never placed there. Is there any egregious toward my brothers and sisters? Is there any sin that maybe you need to get over? Because everything, when we come back to the Father, we get all of the Father. The Bible says all the promises. Can you say all the promises? All the promises of God are yes and amen. We love that. But he wants all of your heart to be connected so that your heart has all the faith needed to receive all he has for us. And I believe while we're praying right now, I believe while we're about to take these communion elements, I believe miracles are gonna to begin to happen inside of your heart. I believe that right now your bodies are gonna to begin to listen, hallelujah, to the connection of God. Because the only reason for sickness was sin and Jesus took care of that sick sin. He took care of the very reason, the only reason that separated me and you from God, the only thing that separated your bodies and my bodies from health, Everything that was supposed to come upon us was put upon that serpent. His name became sin. Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to be worshipped, became the most dirty, evil represent representation sorry, of sin so that you and me could have life abundantly. Amen? And I just want you this morning to bow your knee. Again, that can be in your heart in person. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. We, God, I thank you. You said if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. God, we submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ this morning. God, I come back to my first love. I come back to the first love with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent even as a body in the name of Jesus of being friends with the world, friends with this page and that page and liking all these things that you never liked and loving things that you never loved. God, open in our hearts to other relationships we never should have. God, we were, I hope this is okay in the house of God. Just feel the sober reality of God's jealousy in this room this morning.
Father, you would look at our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus. David prayed it the best. Search my heart, God. God, I, there's been some times I've gotten so off, I didn't know I was off until I said, God, search my heart. It's like, God, why am I so numb to you? God, why am I so lukewarm? And when I bowed my knee and said, search my heart, it says, because of this one thing or this, this thing over here, this, you've been idolizing this, you've been after this, there's something that I believe this morning miraculously is gonna happen in your hearts that God is pursuing. Father, search our hearts, search our hearts. I come back to my first love. We come back to our first loves. We repent. God, I pray there wouldn't be anything in our hearts. Hey, God, but the love of Jesus, that you died on the cross, you became sin so that us who are sinners, us who didn't deserve life, breath, especially not eternal life, could become the righteous of God as sons and daughters. God, I pray today for the removal of every deception. I pray for the invasion of all of heaven. I pray this morning that we would have life and life more abundantly, that every form of darkness would come off of us. Come on, sickness is gonna flee in the name of Jesus. Jesus became a curse, Galatians 3.13, to redeem us from the curse. He's rescuing someone right now. I believe that suicide right now, I just felt it popping. If you can just, how does that have to do with repentance? When you come back to the Father, you come back into the secret place, all of his goodness comes running towards you. All of his wealth, come on somebody, comes running back to you. Everything you believe for, the person you actually are gets reunited with your identity. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. This morning, everything is running away. As we submit to God and resist the devil, he'll, the devil will flee and God draws near. As we draw near to him, Father, we draw near to you this morning. We submit to you, Father. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' wonderful name, in the body that was broken. God, search our hearts, Jesus. Search our hearts, God. Oh, God, in me. Jesus, you would do this. God, I pray in the name of Jesus for real repentance this morning. I pray for real revival. I pray, God, that there would be a true sense of the awe and the fear of God. You know, I heard the Lord just say, don't touch that which I call holy. Other people touch things that aren't holy, and they get away with it, or that are holy, that God says not to touch. I just heard the Lord say, don't touch that which I call holy. He calls the tithe holy. He calls purity holy. Some of you don't feel like you're supposed to pray, but he's like, your <laughs> lack of prayer is almost touching that which isn't holy. Well, so-and-so didn't have to pray like that. It doesn't matter because you're called to be a prophet to the nations. I, I hear the Lord so strong right now saying what I've called you to is nothing to what you're seeing before you. The people you're taking notes from aren't anywhere where I'm taking you. So why are you saying the Lord? Why do I have to sacrifice that? God, it's not wrong. It, is, it may not be wrong for your average bear, but for you, it's wrong. I just feel the Lord said, I've called you out. I hear that those, as a prophet to the nations, I just hear the Lord say, I'm cleaning the house, not in anger, but he loves us so much and he does have a holiness, but to those he loves, he disciplines, he chastises. If you can hear the word of the Lord, he does it with his word first. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear what God is saying before he uses circumstances to bring you into alignment. Father, I pray, God, just feel the fear of God. God in Jesus' name. God in Jesus' name. Birth in us, real repentance. There's a revival. I just feel the Lord. There's, that isn't a cliche. There's a revival of someone's heart when he's gonna break you out. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Whew, Jesus, come on. Bible says he's not mad at anyone. In Acts 17, 30, he overlooks our times of ignorance, but now commands us to repent. Now is the place. Grace is in this house. I feel the calling of grace this morning. You feel the momentum of heaven. You're, come on, there's a power in the house that's willing to reconcile you with a sound mind this morning. If you will repent, 
if you'll say, I'm coming back to grace. I'm coming back to my first love. I promise you there is the fear of the Lord, but turn from your ways now so you can receive. <sighs> Seek the Lord, the Bible says, while he can still be found. There's times of grace where he allows us and leads us out of places of compromise, even sin. Couldn't be lukewarmness. One day, God woke me up and I was in full-time, crazy, hardcore ministry. He said, you're lukewarm. I'm talking, I was ministering five times a week and he said, you're lukewarm. You're using the secret place as just a place for fuel and actually not a place of intimacy for fire. The fire burns it all up. The fear of God burns it all up. His eyes are eyes of fire. When you truly look in that place, sin runs away. Father, purge our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you today for reconciliation, revival. Whew, Jesus, search me, search me. Can you say that, God? Search me. Can you say it with all of your heart? Search me, God. Search me, God. Just feel a pause. Search me, God. Search me, God. Search me, God. Search this place. Search my heart. Search me, God. Search me, God. Oh, God, search me, Jesus. I have no other lovers before you, Jesus. Search me, God. Search me, God, in Jesus' name. Search me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, search me, Jesus. Search me, Jesus. Search me, Jesus. You know, I don't feel to call for an altar call. I just feel the Lord saying he's making things up right now. You know, I just feel the Lord saying there's been delay in someone's life, but there's because of an offense in your heart. And even though it seems righteous, that person really did you wrong, that your delay will immediately stop if you'll just repent of that unforgiveness and that bitterness. Today, someone's destiny, I believe, is about to be loosed, and you're about to be exactly where you're supposed to be if you'll repent this morning from unforgiveness and bitterness. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just feel like we can start to partake of the communion elements. If your heart isn't to that place of being right with the Lord, then you don't have to partake. There's no condemnation, but... The Bible does say to have your heart take it properly. So the Bible says this, says, um, sorry, sorry, in the same night which he was betrayed, he took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can you say this? We've had so many people healed when we're, we're doing this in communion. Can you say in Jesus' name? Your body was broken, so my body could be mended. Jesus, I receive your body when it was torn. It was so mine could be repaired. In Jesus' name, I receive the body of Jesus being broken so my body could be completely restored. In Jesus' name, can you take eat of the body of Christ this morning? We just pray over a body to say, in Jesus' name, sickness, go. Say, in Jesus' name, death, go. Say, in Jesus' name, every pain, go. In Jesus Christ's name, so you have no right or rule over my body. It's lifted. Your rule in my body is lifted. In Jesus Christ's name. Now get off my body. In Jesus Christ's name. Say, Jesus, your body was cursed so mine could be blessed. And now the curse is lifted. And give thanks to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
We receive, God, the healing power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. My body is free from the curse. My, this is interactive, by the way. Jesus is an interactive relationship. Hallelujah, God. We praise you, God, that my body is free from the curse. That, Jesus, your body was broken so I could be healed and mended in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the same manner, he took also the cup after supper, saying, this, is also, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, do, drink it in remembrance of me. Can we partake of the blood of Jesus? So can you say, in Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus severs me and my life from every curse, from every generational curse, from every demon of hell, from every bondage, from every bloodhound of sin. It's severed this morning. Every curse, every expectation for judgment is severed and broken and not allowed in my life. Just say, Satan, I serve you notice. You're not allowed in me, my life, my family, my house, or my destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Say in Jesus' name. Every curse has been officially broken. From now on and forever, every curse is broken over my life. Say I receive the blessing. Say I receive the inheritance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I receive my marriage renewed with heaven in Jesus' name. If you believe that, can you shout amen? Awesome. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, praise him like every debt's been forgiven. Praise him like everything's being restored. The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Come on, praise him like your body is being healed. This morning, praise him. Thank you, Lord God. Every devil is defeated. Every curse, everything that's been against you is being broken. Judgments are being reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God has given us the victory in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. He's broken, delivered us from the power of darkness. Colossians 1:13 delivered us from the power of darkness. Come on, his blood is greater. In Jesus' mighty name, if you agree with that, can you shout amen? Hallelujah. Awesome, guys. We're going to invite our uh, father of the house, Apostle Tommy, to come up, and we're going to go into Propheticus Sunday. Praise the Lord. How many of you feel new? Hallelujah. You feel healed? You feel set free? Amen. Who's ready for a miracle? Who's ready for a miracle from heaven? It's time for the Lord to touch you. And I believe whilst the word has been preached, the Lord has already been healing you. Amen. I want to read the scripture to you and then we're going to pray very quickly. It's in Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1. Matthew chapter 9 verse 1. Um, The Bible says that he got into a boat and he crossed over and came to the city and beheld they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, whose faith did he see? Whose faith did he see? 
He didn't see his faith. He saw their faith. The Bible says, he said, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts, for which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. I believe that when you encounter Jesus, you don't get permission to go back to your house the same way. Listen, I don't know about you, but you don't get permission to encounter Jesus and go home still sick. You don't get that permission. The Bible says he took our infirmities. If he took it, why are you still calling it yours? If he took it, if he took that cancer, if he took that paralysis, if he took that liver disease, if he took that diabetes, if he took that high blood pressure, then why do I call it my diabetes? Why do I call it my depression? Why do I call it my sickness? It belongs to him. And you'll discover the biggest reason we call it ours is because we don't yet know our sins are forgiven. Sometimes before Jesus can deal with sickness, he has to deal with sin. That's why I'm so glad we took communion today. Can we limit the movement as much as possible? Let's respect the presence of the Holy Spirit. Please, everybody moving, stop still now. I know you've got something important to you. There's nothing more important than this moment. He said, which is easier to say? Be healed or your sins are forgiven. That you might know that the Son of Man has power to forgive men their sins. That means something very important. Some people don't believe that they can be healed because they don't yet know they've been forgiven. They don't yet know the power of his forgiveness. I was sitting with Todd White on a plane yesterday and we were talking and he was sharing with me about his belief about grace. And in his belief about grace, he said, Tommy, I believe that people who say, God, where are you, don't know that they've been loved by God. They don't yet live in the fear of God because when you live in God's fear, you don't have to ask, where are you? That struck a chord on the inside of me. What if we're people who are saying, God, where are you? Because the enemy has allowed sin to come into our life, whether it's the sin of anger or the sin of pornography, the sin of fornication, adultery, whatever it is. The Bible never says your sins have hidden me from you. It says your sins have hidden you from me. So sin is not God hiding from us. It's us hiding from God. It's us leaving him and then saying, God, where are you? That's why God hates sin, because sin separates us from him. Because where there's shame, where there's fear, and where there's guilt, healing cannot flow. So before God can deal with your healing, he has to deal with your shame. 
Before God can deal with your healing, He has to deal with your fear. Before God can deal with your healing, He has to deal with your guilt. I remember the scripture in another translation, it says the power of God was present to heal them. And you wonder, sometimes you think them is the person in front of you. And you realize them is also the religious people who need healing from their religion. Because religion can convince us that we need to do certain things to win the favor of God, to be healed, to be delivered, and to be set free. I want to point out to you, I heard an evangelist preaching one day. I mean, we're going to pray in a minute. I heard an evangelist preaching one day. They said, uh, before Jesus can heal you, you have to be born again. So he would always do altar calls. And he'd bring hundreds of people to the altar, and then he'd pray for them. Nobody that Jesus healed was saved. Not one person. Not one person Jesus healed was saved. I want you to get a hold of that. Not one. I've seen Jesus heal Muslims. I've seen Jesus heal homosexuals. The first miracle I ever saw the Lord do was he healed a dying homosexual right in front of my eyes. Before he even got him delivered, he got him healed. This was a dying homosexual who was racist. Never forget him. He hated my guts because I was black. And yet he came to our meeting one day, got touched by the Holy Spirit, the sentence of death broken off his life, and whilst he was out under the power of God, he saw our Messiah, Jesus, and he decided to give his life to Jesus Christ that day. True story. True story. But what was it that caused that moment to happen? It's when we realize this, that Jesus meets a leper, and, he says, and the leper says to him, if you're willing... You can make me clean. And if we don't read the scripture properly, we'll miss what Jesus did. The Bible says, and Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. You have to understand, you don't touch a leper. It was very important that the scribe who was writing the testimony of what he witnessed Jesus do, it was very important for him to mention that he reached out his hand and touched him. And in the touch, he exclaimed, of course I'm willing. If I can touch you in your leprosy. If I can touch you in your sin. And he's not touching you so that you can think that the healing is an endorsement to keep sinning. That's why I healed a man. He said, please stop sinning unless something worse happens to you. He's not touching you so that you can feel endorsed in sin that he touched you. He's touching you in the hope that you will go and sin no more. But I want you to do me a favor. We're going to worship. We're going to sing. Worship team, come out here. We're going to worship. We're going to sing. Everybody rise to your feet. Unless you're otherwise incapacitated, please rise to your feet. Because the Bible says, Jesus seeing. I'm going to say it again. Jesus seeing. You may not need a miracle today, but your neighbor does. You may not need a touch from God today but your neighbor does. Can the prophetic team come out here too? Listen, just come on out, prophetic team, and stand behind me on the stage. You may not need something to happen personally for you, but there's somebody standing next to you right now that needs a touch from God. And I want to tell you what the Lord told me to say to you, which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven. Or take up your mat and walk. In other words, the same grace that saves you is the same grace that heals you. 
We think it's a different grace. Well, it's so easy to be saved, but it's hard to be healed. And Jesus said, which one's easier? They're both the same thing. The same fountain that you receive salvation is the same fountain you receive healing. You don't come to the throne of Jesus and you say, Jesus, please, please, please. No, you say, I receive you, Lord, in my heart as my personal Savior. I thank you for the price that you paid for me on the cross and I receive it willingly. It's the same way you receive healing. Jesus, please heal me, please. No. Receive your healing by faith. Receive it knowing that you're a child of God. And if you're not yet a child of God, receive it knowing that he was a father to you long before you were a child to him. Receive it. Receive this God that wasn't slain 2,000 years ago. He was slain from the foundation of the earth. I leave you with this. Jesus is not going to heal you today. If you believe Jesus is going to heal you today, you've come to the wrong place. If you're expecting a miracle today, you've come to the wrong place. And I know that sounds counterproductive to say we're a prophetic encounter Sunday and then to tell you in the same breath that Jesus is not going to heal you today because it's biblically true. He already healed you 2,000 years ago on a cross and he's waiting for you to receive the finished work of his cross. It is already finished. He's not trying to heal you. He's not trying to be God. He's not trying to be good. He's already healed you and he's waiting for you to catch up. Catch up with the finished work of the cross today. These precious people are going to release words of knowledge in a minute. And as they release words of knowledge, here's what I need you to do. Somebody's going to raise their hand and they're going to say, that word is for me. Are you understanding? Listen, if there's a word for you, the Bible says, receive with joy. Some say joy. joy. Say joy. joy. It says receive with joy. So don't receive it. Well, I think that word, I think I really think that word's for me. You're healed by receiving that word with joy. You're like, good God, that's my word. Come on now. You're like, oh, that's for me. That's for me. That's me. Come on. That's how you're healed. And somebody is going to pray for you. They're not going to pray, Father, would you heal them in your time? They're going to say, be healed in the name of Jesus. That's it. Then you're going to do what you could not do before. There's aisle space. There's pew space. If you need to run around the building, run around the building. If you need to swing your arm, just make sure you don't hit anybody. Get into an aisle. Swing your arm. Whatever you've got to do. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Third thing you're going to do is you're going to flash your mobile phone light in the air when you've been healed. And the person who prayed for you, final thing, is going to bring you to this altar right here to Lisanne. And they're going to share the testimony with her because of time we're not going to allow you all to share your testimony because some of you are wonderful preachers and we love your preach, but we got to get out of here. So they're going to share the testimony. I'm going to lay my hands on you and declare it will never return again. I believe it. Listen. Some say, I don't want to share my testimony. I'm shy, fooey. People lose their miracle when they don't share their testimony. In one place, Jesus said, who, who touched me? And the woman who was touched hid. And he needed her to come out and share what the Lord had done. 
And every time people shared, Jesus went from your faith has healed you to your faith has made you whole. Come on, you don't want to just come healed. You want to leave whole. Come on, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to see walking sticks left on this altar, wheelchairs left on this altar, hearing aids left on this altar. Why? Because your faith is getting ready to make you whole. So everybody lift your hands and let's pray in the Spirit. Quickly, pray in the Spirit. If you can't pray in the Spirit, just pray. Just say, Jesus. Just say, Jesus. Just say, Jesus. Come on. It's just as easy to be healed as it is to be saved. It's not a different grace, it's the same grace. It's the same power that saved you. That's the same power that's going to heal you. Libacando ora masi, libra sombre e calamaso, libra sombre e calamamasia, libra cande. Come on, press in, press in, press in. Come on, press in, press in, press in. I need to hear you roaring in the spirit. I need to see your faith. Come on. The Bible says Jesus seeing their faith. Come on. I got to see your faith today. Come on. Give God a 60 second prayer of faith. A faith prayer until the atmosphere becomes so filled with faith. Until faith becomes so available that your neighbor can feel it. Your neighbor can touch it. Until Precious people, just pray. Press in. Press. Press. Press into that master, that healer, that Jesus, the Messiah, the chosen one, the healer. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus, not on your sickness. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. That's it, fix your eyes on Jesus. Come on, just press in a few more seconds. I feel something, 
about to break out in this house. Fix your eyes on Jesus, come on. Fix your eyes on Jesus, come on. Jesus. 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 Come on, there's got to be an intentionality. Jesus seeing their faith. Let Jesus see your faith today. Let Jesus see it. Let him see it. Let him see it. Let him see it. Let him see it. That's it. He's moving in the room right now. He's moving in the room right now. Shh. Just lift your hands right now. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Keep praying in the spirit. Stay, stay sensitive. Just lift your hands right now. Jesus is here. 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 And where he is is holy ground. Lift your hands quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the living Son of God, I bind every spirit of infirmity right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you, come out now. Now! Now! All over this room, now! 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 Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of sickness, you foul spirit of torment, you go into the pit now, in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of blindness, you unclean spirit of deafness, go into the pit now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every mute spirit. Every spirit possessing your children. We command you now in Jesus' name. You go into the pit now in Jesus' name. You don't belong in Houston. You don't belong here. You are illegal. We serve you an eviction notice now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Out! Good God, I feel the anointing. Come on. Something's happening. 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 I literally feel like while we were praying, somebody's ear, you just felt a popping in your ear. Like there was something wrong there before, like a, a, a sinus issue in your hearing. I just feel like you're somewhere in this area. If that's you, raise your hand. Quickly, go find that lady, pray for her. Saints, that's it. I need the saints praying for her. Pray for her, pray for her. Come on, you just keep, you just stay in the spirit. All of you, don't, don't get distracted. Stay in the, stay in the spirit with me just a little bit. The Holy Ghost is moving right 
right now. I just see like there's a woman and you have like something wrong with your shoulders where you can't even lift your hands up higher than, than a little bit. But today, the Lord is healing that stiffness. Just begin to lift them up. I, I believe you're here in this section. Begin to lift it up. Come on. I need you to find those people. Come on, praying people. Come on, sons and daughters. Go and find them. I just see right now. I see somebody here. I see like a sciatic pain, like a shooting pain. Is that over there? Quick, go find them. Quick, go find them. It's being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Wow, miracles are happening all over this room. I just see Jesus moving right now all over this room. I see somebody, there's been like a fear of cancer, a cancer scare. And I don't even know where you are, but I just rebuke that cancer. I rebuke that cancer. Where are you? Where are you? you wave if it's you. I rebuke that cancer. I command that lump to shrink right now in the name of Jesus. Go find that person. I don't know if, if, if you're at the back somewhere, but I just see, I see a cancer. I see a lump that's being healed right now in Jesus' name. You found a lump in your breast. Where are you? You found a lump in your breast. I need you to check the lump. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just see somebody and you've had some kind of replacement surgery in your leg somewhere and I just see metal or something in the leg or in the knee. I don't know what that is, but oh, you've just been healed. Come on, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a praise. Let's give Jesus a praise. I said, let's give Jesus a praise. Come on. I see somebody and I just see, I see arthritis in your legs is being healed right now. Arthritis in your legs. I need you to do something. You're around this area. I see your knees are being healed right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare to knee replacement surgery. I command metal to become bone again. In the name of Jesus. I've got faith for it. I don't know about you, but this is a house of miracles. Another one's just been healed. Let's give Jesus praise. Come on. Let's give Jesus praise. I come on, Come on, so our, our prophets, our prophets are going to give a word of knowledge. And they're going to say, if that is you, raise your hand. And body of Christ, you are going to come to those people. And you are going to start praying. Already the spirit has moved. So go ahead, Miss Brenda. I have a couple of them. Um, the first one is for mouth blisters and lip sores. You have these small eruptions inside your mouth. Lift your come hand on, I need you if to that's you. Keep the atmosphere you. going. Keep the atmosphere Lift your going. hand if that's you. And then mouth blisters, if it's you, lift your hand quickly. Numbness here, please go find in them. the Pray sole of your foot. You have numbness in the sole of your foot. It feels like a block of wood. If that's you, Come on, lift team, your go hand. Find them, please. There's some of you that are struggling to move into a new season and come out of your past and be healed. If that is you, raise your hand. Jesus. If someone that haven't been able to cry. And God says your, your heart is crying. He's want, he want to heal your heart. If that is you, raise your hand. Anything related with um, gastrointestinal, be it um, digestive issues, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Digestive issues and Crohn's disease. disease. If that's you, wave. Digestive issues or Crohn's disease. Over here, can we go find this person? Saints, you don't need our permission. If you're standing next to a waver, please pray for them. You have permission to pray even in if you're a visitor. In, in neurotransmitters, um, anything that affects mental, um, sleep patterns, mood, I believe the Lord is bringing balance to that. If that's you, raise your hand. Hey, I, I just really felt quick. There was a lady or ladies who had, uh, there was some kind of trauma with childbirth. I actually saw you on the delivery table and uh, it's never been the same for you. Even nerves in your legs and something to do with trauma during um, childbearing. If uh, you could just wave your hands. Come on, just on a right there, right there. There's, uh, there was at least three. Okay, there's a lady over there. 
I actually felt like it was dehabilitating for someone. It was really strong. Someone else, maybe a really right there, this lady. Come on, if they're raising their hands up, please run over to them. Wave your hand if you haven't still got a prayer partner. I heard the word dyslexia, that God wants to deliver someone from dyslexia this morning. That means there's a problem in the past. Raise your hand. Come on, run to that man. We're going to curse that in Jesus' name. Keep your hand up, sir. Anyone else with dyslexia? God wants to deliver you. I heard like a root canal gone bad. Saw, saw a lady specifically on a dental chair, root canal or something with a surgery in the dentistry. Wave your hand. Anyone here, root canal? Okay, right there. Someone else, there's someone specifically, some kind of root canal or dental procedure that went wrong. Please raise your hand. God's going to heal you this morning. Praise God. I just see somebody, your child, had fallen over in some kind of playground or park somewhere, and I just see an arm that's injured. I see an arm that's injured. I see a little child, your arm has been injured. I just hear the Lord say, the power of the Holy Spirit is flowing through that arm right now in Jesus' name. Just begin to do something you couldn't do before. Begin to move it. I see somebody's little child, somebody's little child. There's something with your arm. There's an injury. I don't know where you are. Over here. Over here, Who, where are her parents? Where's her parents? Where, who's the, who's the child? I, guys, I need you to move quickly. The atmosphere needs some promptness, so help me. Who's the child? Is this little girl? How does she injure her, her hand? She was racing her sister on a bike and she fell off hit the wall is it a break come on can we believe God for a miracle in this oh precious one why are you crying my dear come here why are you crying you're happy my sister's getting healed I'm just so happy right now you're happy because your sister's getting healed oh well father in the name of Jesus we speak to every break, broken bone and we command bones. We prophesy to these bones and we declare over these bones, over these fingers, over this hand, be healed now in the name of Jesus. We command all pain to leave now in Jesus' name and we command this hand, this arm to receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Do you believe this is a house of miracles? Do you believe this is a house of miracles? Yes. Yes. Do you believe this is a house of miracles? Yes. Come on. Let's continue to praise God. Very painful shin splints. Very painful shin splints. If that's you, raise your hand. Shin splints. If that's you, raise your hand. I received two words, uh, headaches, migraines, and it may be affecting your vision, causing pain in your eye, one or both of your eyes as well. If that's you, please raise your hand. Praise God. Is this another miracle? Come on, let's give Jesus a shout. Another miracle's happened just now. Um, the second one is um, unrestful sleep. Yeah. If that's you, please raise your hand. Um, First, uh, these individuals are called to uh, own property, and not just one, but multiple properties. If that's you, God wants to release finances for real estate. Um, yeah, raise your hand, please. Um, there's a lot of you. Um, next, God is uh, gonna highlighting doctors in the room. Those who are either about to be a doctor, already a doctor, but you're called to be a doctor in the spirit as well as a PhD or an MD. If that's you, God wants to release finances. Raise your hand. Thank you. And I just, I just, okay. I'm so sorry. I just see somebody, you're a nurse, but you struggle with your blood pressure. You're a nurse yes. and you struggle with your blood pressure. Where Raise are you? Hands. Come out here Raise quickly. The, the, the Lord's doing a miracle. Greg, can you pray for this precious one? 
I, I just see the Lord healing her body today. I just saw her checking her blood pressure by herself and, and saying, God, how can I heal others and I need healing in my own body? You just lay hands. Is this another nurse? Come on, come on, come on out, come on out. There's miracles happening right now. I, 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 I see God doing miracles. I see somebody, you have a little girl, a little girl, and the little girl came to you saying, Daddy, I don't want to wear glasses anymore. I, 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 I want to see. You have a little girl, and the little girl, she came to you, and she said, Daddy, I don't want to wear glasses anymore. I want to see. And I see where her eyes are were, were so bad that, that, that she had to have some kind of a, a, a special wear, eyewear. But she's like, Daddy, I want to see. If that's you, I need you to, to bring that little girl to me right now. I, I want to pray for whoever that little girl is. Quick quickly 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 move 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 run 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 the Holy Ghost is here for a moment and we gotta catch him while he's upon us Jesus father in the name of Jesus oh God I command these eyes to be clear 2020 vision in Jesus name Father, I speak over these eyes and I command them to be made whole. I command them to be made whole. Sight be restored in Jesus' name. Come here, baby. Father, in the name of Jesus, she has the faith for it. Lord, I command her sight to be restored. Come on, pray. Jesus, seeing their faith, restore her sight now, 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 now. There it is, there it is, catch it. There's an anointing here. Take these glasses off of me, my dear. You want Jesus to heal your eyes? Father, in the name of Jesus, I command sight. <laughs> eyes be open now in the name of Jesus. See clearly, see clearly in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, now tell me, baby, what couldn't you see before? What? Pray, 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 people. Pray, church. I just see somebody, your child's name begins with R, and I don't know what the R stands for, but I just feel like God's healing somebody's child. The letter of the name is like R, and I, I, I don't know, I don't know what that 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 is, but there, there's a there's somebody with the letter R in the name being healed right now. Come here, honey. What do what, what do you need? Eyes, eyes. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. So many eyes coming alive now. Father, I declare, heal every eye. Heal every eye in Jesus' name. I see God healing somebody's child. You call this child Mimi, but I just see like Naomi's being healed right now. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Vision be restored now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Feel this retina. Feel this retina. Feel this eye right now in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. Just keep speaking. Okay. Lastly, um, God wants to open the eyes of individuals who are struggling to see in the spirit. Maybe you haven't seen in a while or you just haven't seen like angelic visitations or demonic things that God wants you to cast out. He wants to open your eyes. If that's you, raise your hand. Yes. Um, if you have a cataract in your eyes, God is ready to hear you. If that's you, raise your hand. Cataract in the eye. 
if you have a long tumor, is that a long in your, uh, your tumor? In, excuse me. Long tumor. Oh, you have a problem with your lungs. Raise your hand. God is ready to heal you. And thirdly, if you have a brain tumor, raise your hand. God is ready to heal you. Thank you. Brain tumor, lung tumor, raise your hand. The first one I got was the Lord is wanting to break cigarette addiction off of someone. He, I literally saw his hand touch your mouth and he purged the desire right out of your body. So if that's you, would you raise your hand? And then the second thing I saw was actually for this couple right here on the second row, the lady with the white and the salmon blouser. I heard the voice of the Lord say, I've given you the inheritance of Egypt. And he's wanting to raise up a heart in you for a new direction in ministry. And I saw a property coming into your means. And then the last one was for this lady standing in the aisle in front of Apostle Shara with the headband on behind Julie. Yes, her right there. I heard the Lord say, I'm breaking the battering ram of the enemy off of your life. And today the captive is going free. So I just release a new wave of freedom and an open heaven over you, says the Lord, that no longer will you be bound. No longer will you feel like the enemy has the upper hand. Today is your day of restoration. Today is your day of encounter in Jesus' name. And the cigarette addiction, the Lord is saying to me that vaping, vaping is also an addiction. And he wants to break that off of you right now. The spirit of the Lord has uh, told me that somebody is being free and set free from um, anxiety and panic attacks and night terrors. If that's you, raise your hand. And also, there's a young man in here who's been heavy laden and downtrodden that he is considering suicide. And the Lord wants to set you free from the spirit of suicide. Raise your hand if that's you so we can come alongside and pray. So I heard the Lord say that he's healing someone if you have kidney failure or kidney disease. If you are on dialysis, he's going to heal you now. If that is you, raise your hand and somebody will meet you to pray for you. But you're being healed today. Okay, so tinnitus, ear ringing. You have tinnitus in your ears. Your ears are ringing. Raise your hand. Uh, the second one is right sided. Tonight is over here. Come find this lady. Tonight right sided head here. pain. It's a dull head pain. Tonight it's heavy on your right side. Raise your hand if you have right sided head pain. The third is suicide, suicidal thoughts, and it's due to bullying on your job and for the youth at school. Raise your hand if you're having suicidal thoughts because of bullying on your job and at your school. Okay. Uh, um, so I just heard about somebody being healed from like heart palpitations or like making it feel like your heart is skipping a beat. Heart palpitations. And it's causing like fear to really come. Over here, over you. here, over here. Raise your hand if that's you. Amen. Someone that deals in the culinary arts, you are a chef or you do catering, um, I hear the Lord's breaking off uh, arthritis. Like it's been such a, a hinder to produce. And God wants to break that and heal you in your uh, arthritis. Arthritis Raise is being hand. healed. Raise your hand. So I heard the Lord say osteoporosis. Someone is dealing with extreme bone pain. I also heard um, um, carpal tunnel. If that's you, please raise your hand. Carpal tunnel, bone pain, raise your hand. Uh, in, in I heard your Christ. back pain. I heard you were in a car accident. If you were in a car accident, whether it was three years ago, three months ago, or three days ago, raise your hand. You've been dealing with pain. The Lord wants to over heal here, you. Over here, go find this lady. And I also heard for the young man with the tan cap on his head that the Lord is bringing clarity to you about your identity and that he's drawing you closer Come to on. him because he is calling you to be his mouthpiece. Come on. Um, I hear the Lord saying that some people in here have been trying to get approved for a loan for a house and you have been not approved because either you're self-employed or because you don't meet a requirement, but the Lord is going to make sure you are meeting the requirements in the spirit realm. And so if that's you, he's saying, go back and try again in Jesus' name. You're going to get the loan. In Jesus' name. 
The first thing that I heard was like there's a left arm that had a lot of tingling and numbness and pain due to a uh, sprain. If that is you, please raise your hand. And the second one is back pain associated with childhood trauma. There's inner healing and physical healing that needs to happen. If that is you, raise your hand. All right, all right. So the first one is uh, digestive issues related to hormones that it's actually stopping you from being able to do the things that you want to do. Raise your hand. And then the next one is you can't quite pinpoint your pain, but it's this whole side. It's just like your arm, your leg, it goes up to your shoulder. Like you can't quite pinpoint it, but it's just this whole side. Please raise your hand. Residual effects from a stroke. Any residual side effects that are left over from a stroke, raise your hand. And for skin diseases, any skin disease that you need healing for, raise your hand. If you have a child that has problems with bed wetting, raise your hand. God wants to heal that. Also, if you've had an ongoing infection in your body and it doesn't seem to clear up, raise your hand. Um, this one was uh, for Apostle. I had a dream that the Lord was standing with you and a woman came to you and there was a four letter word, but it says, intercession for cancer healed now and everybody in the congregation was being healed from cancer so if you have cancer here i want to tell you the lord is here and he has anointed him and you will be healed come out now if you have cancer come out if you have cancer come out now you got cancer come out here quickly run quickly you got cancer run i don't need you walking i need you running you want to be healed of cancer come out quick Come out quick, come out quick, come out quick. Cancers, cancers, whatever the cancer is, come out quick. Come out quick, you got cancer in your body. Come out quick. I wanna pray for you, cancer in your body. Anybody with cancer, come out quickly. I guess you don't have cancer anymore, amen. Well, let's praise God anyway. Okay, good. Wow. If, ready? Wow. If there's anyone in here that has a child with spectrum autism, I want you to raise your hand and bring him up here. Anybody struggling with identity, if you feel like you're in a season where you're not sure like who the Lord has called you to be, if you're struggling with identity, please raise your hand and receive prayer. Identity, struggling with identity. Just a second, just a second, shh, just a second. There's a moment that God needs to do something in a child with a letter R. This woman just said she didn't come up. Well, come on, honey. You know, there are moments, come here with me. There are moments that we actually need the Lord to speak to us. Are you mom? You're mom. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Can you stretch your hands towards her? What's your name? Rayleigh. Rayleigh. Raylin. Oh, wonderful. Stretch your hands in Raylin's direction. Raylin, I know you're 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 not you're more of a shy person, um, so this might not be your usual appetite. But Raylin, I just hear the Lord say. If you'll trust me, I'll break that grief on the inside of you. And I'll break that brokenness on the inside of you. And the Lord calls you by name because he wants to deal with a fatherless heart. And he wants to heal a place where your eyes have seen too much and your ears have heard too much. And the Lord wants to show you that he places the solitude in families. And the Spirit of God says, Raylin, I'm speaking to you because the Lord wants to rescue you. He wants to rescue you out of trouble. He wants to rescue you out of anger. He wants to rescue you out of places where you've 
wandered and strayed and come back and strayed again and come back. And the Spirit of God says, there's a call of God on your life. And the enemy is wrestling you with rejection and with the fear that nobody wants you. And the Spirit of God says, I want you. And so, Raylin, can the Lord rescue you from danger? Can the Lord rescue you from your present path? Because the Lord wants you whole. And I'm going to say this sensitively. Can you hold hands with your mother just quickly? I just believe the Lord wants to heal this relationship. And the Lord's calling you out. Not to expose you not to embarrass you, but because there's a call of God on your life. And she doesn't want you to go through what she went through. Listen to me. She doesn't want you to experience what she experienced. This mother loves you. So I want you to pray for your daughter. Can you pray for her? Can you do it right now? Just pray for her. And we're going to pray for you. I just believed that there was somebody with the letter R that God wanted to heal their sight. But God doesn't just want to heal your physical eyes. He wants to heal your spiritual eyes as well. The Lord is delivering you from every anxiety, every depression, every heaviness. And He's rescuing you in this hour because there's a call of God on your life. He's marked you for destiny. He's marked you for purpose. And there's a hand of deliverance that, wants, that the Lord wants to put on over you right now. Come on, just stretch your hands in her direction. I feel, you know what? I feel like, I feel like as I'm putting my arm around her, clip myself in your precious bangles, don't worry. I feel like because I'm putting my arm around you, I feel the Father putting his arm around you. And I feel the Father adopting you. And I see him taking all privileges back over you. And I see him signing your adoption papers. I just see the name Abba over your document. And over this mother, just there's, a, there's something here that I've, you know, today is about the two of you. I just feel it. Heaven has to stop for you. What's your name, mother? Raven. Raven, I just hear the Lord say, you did the best you could with the tools that were given to you. And the Lord says, I reaffirm your identity because you felt like a mother at a time where you were barely even a child and the spirit of God says where 
you caused hurt, it's because you were hurt. And hurting people hurt people. But the Spirit of God says, can you forgive yourself? Because the Lord says, if you can, the Lord says, I'm going to rescue her from every decision that was made even before you were born. And I see things were so contentious in your home that the Lord says, you, you were one who left home early and were in and out. But the Spirit of God says, I delivered you from trouble. And the Lord says, I'm going to break the spirit and power of poverty. And the Spirit of God says, there were times where you wondered where you were going to live. And there were times where things got so bad financially that the enemy tried to put you out of house. But the Lord says, I'm adopting this family now. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, let this precious mother encounter the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this precious daughter encounter the rescuing hand of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, God, their heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Now listen. Now listen. Here's, here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. They haven't asked me to do this. I don't know them. But I know when people need a financial miracle. I'm not doing this to embarrass them. I'm doing this to, so they know that the Lord loves them. Come on now, let's do it. We're gonna bless this house. We're gonna bless them. We're gonna bless them. Come on, come on saints. Come on saints. Come on saints. Come on saints. Come on, sons. Come on, sons. Thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus. So as, as we see, there is a line of what God has done. These are just a few of the testimonies. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So our first testimony is Kiara. Kiara, come over here and, and let's tell Apostle what, what the Lord has done. What, what happened? Yes, I've been dealing with sciatic pain um, for about seven years now carrying my children and I've been dealing with it for so long that it be, it's become normal for me and I would say the pain has progressed maybe even more my husband can attest maybe like about the last few months it's gotten worse um, when I said I work from home so when I'm sitting like it's constantly I'm constantly your husband pain. is here uh, yes my where's your husband here. where is he uh, my husband's right there with his hand raised with the white shirt come on. husband come on up come, here. come, come testify. on husband. Come on, give this family yes, a big God yes. bless you. Yes, my husband, he's been, um, he can, he, since I carried my twins, um, I've been in pain constantly, day in and day out, and wow. I've become accustomed to it, bending, sitting, walking, standing for long periods of time. Husband, um, come this way, come this way. You don't have to take the, the long way. Don't take the long way. God bless you. Wow. So these are the twins? Yes. 
Oh, hello, twins. Say hi. Wow. <laughs> yes, and so um, when Apostle said, I knew the word was for me because I didn't come expecting, like, you know, any sciatic pain or anything because I had become so accustomed to it. I just, it was an afterthought. And so um, when Apostle said, um, uh, someone dealing with sciatic pain in this area, and he touched this side instantly, I knew it was for me. And I'm like, wow. And so the ladies were so kind enough to just lay hands on me and pray for me. And um, by faith, you know, I, I received it. And wow. they said, do what you were not capable of doing before. And so I had to think, I'm like, what couldn't I do? Because it was so normal. So I bent, I'm like, okay, well, okay. And I did this thing. And I'm never able to do that. Anytime I do this, Pain just shoots. I don't even try. And I was able to do it painlessly. And that's the first time. Come on. And Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hey, come just on. come here for come me. Here. Stand next to your husband. Oh, man, there's such a call of God on your lives. Such a call of God. What do you do? Uh, insurance. insurance. Man, there's a call of God on you. So strong. Switch your hands in the direction. Father, in the name of Jesus. We declare, let the call of God begin to manifest. Thank you for the business anointing that you placed in this man. Thank you for the desire for financial freedom that caused him to be a man that wants to work for himself. But Lord, there's a call of God on his life for ministry. Release it. There it is. Just catch. Just catch both of you. Father, release it. Prophetic oil on you. Prophetic oil on you. You'll never be the same again. Father, call this precious couple into the service of your kingdom in a great way. Bless them in business. Bless them in finances. I see the Lord say you go from prop from insurance to properties. There is a property desire to manifest on the inside of you. And the Spirit of God says, I will remain You. God bless you. God bless you. This is Shell. This is Shell, and she was cleared of sinus ear pain that was causing vertigo. Sinus ear pain causing vertigo healed? Yes. Wow. How would you know you're healed? Because I can hear very clearly. Very, very clearly. And I can hear the Lord even clearer now. And my, one of my first deliverance from demonic attacks came from my ear, where they had to pull it out. So being delivered of this is like praise God just lift your hands father in Jesus name thank you for this miracle we breathe new life into her now her faith has made a whole 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 in Jesus name in Jesus name father we declare more <laughs> fill her with more in Jesus name glory to God come on give the Lord a praise, praise the Lord so this is Eunice, and when the prophet um, identified right shoulder pain, she's been healed. She's had it for six months. Show them what you couldn't do. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. It was hard to sleep at night. It would hurt so bad and radiate down the arm, but I felt the release. I felt the release. Lift your hands quickly. Father, in Jesus' name. Fire. Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Kidney disease. He, but Apostle, can you please have my wife come up? She's the one that needs a true miracle today. Maria. Maria, come up. Maria, come up. Come on up, Maria. God bless you. Can we help her up? So what's happened? Uh, about six and a half, half weeks ago, I was in a car accident. Um, 16 year old kid with no insurance T-boned me on the right side and so I've been experiencing pains and a few people today um, have prayed for me I'm feeling better I've been going to the chiropractor and 
pushing through the pain and going to work. And it's just, it's been hard financially and just trying to continue on. But we have our faith in God. We know that God will too. Praise God. Lift your hands. Awesome. Tell them a little thing off the mic. I declare be healed now. Let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet right now, right now. Jesus, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Let their faith make them whole. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just breathe that in. That's the new atmosphere of heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. 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 Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Come on, give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Quickly, something happened Th in your this body. Is Pamela. Was it uh, baby issues? Yes. You've been healed now in Jesus' yes. name. You can feel it. The glory yes. of God. Yes. Power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. What happened? And you've been healed. Yes. What couldn't you do before? Was it here? Um, my, I, I see it. And the Lord's done a miracle. Yes. It's gone. Lift your hand. Power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, give the Lord a praise. You don't feel any it's gone forever. pain in the knees, gone forever. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Miracle. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Get, come and give God praise. Praise come on, the let's Lord. Give him praise. He came looking for a new season, and he got what he came for. Amen. Praise, praise God. God. What's the new season? <laughs> Father, I release grace upon this precious man in Jesus' name. Use him for your glory. Quickly. Uh huh. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's do this. What's happened, young man? Um, uh, I had knee pain and um, I couldn't run for a month. You had knee pain and you couldn't run for a month. What's your name? Zane. Zane. Can you run now? Can you show us? Go ahead, run. Come on, give us a run. Come on, run back, run back this way. Come on, run this way again. Come on, run this way again. Oh! Come on, man. God bless you, Father. Lift your hands. Use him for your glory in the name. God's gonna use you mightily, Father. Fill him with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. This yes. is Keith and he was in a car accident and he couldn't see out of his left eye and now he can see. You can see? You can see? You better give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Whoa! Hey, you couldn't see? You couldn't see? No, sir. And you can see now? You can see clearly. 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 How many fingers? How many fingers? How many fingers? How many fingers?
Lord's not just healing you, He's delivering you as well. You need deliverance. Lift your hands. Father, everything you have implanted in this vessel, every foul spirit, every unclean devil, out in Jesus' name. Look at it, look at it, look at it. There's the power of the Holy Ghost. 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 Loose him now. Loose him now. Loose. Loose. Power of Jesus' name. application to get started so this is uh, people that I have been working with and God has sent great people to me and he just wanted to assure me today praise God that I am it's done in Jesus name Amen. This is Jeremy when the prophet called out numbness in the feet he raised his hand and he was healed numbness in the feet God. Yes. pain is gone pain is gone Amen. God bless you. This is Andreas. One of his legs was shorter than the other, and it grew up! Come on. Come on. Uh, I don't want to, but just sit down for me. Help, help him sit down. Help him sit down. Help him sit down. Let's, let's, let's see. Straighten out the legs. Wow. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Wow. So these, these were not even before? Say again. Uh, the, I didn't even knew it was short. As I was getting prayed, the brother told me, sit down and make sure my back was straight. And obviously, he's like, you got a short, uh, shorter leg. And when we started praying, instantly, it just went. Yes, Lord! When Apostle Greg called about the childbirth, she's not been able to bend over. She's had ovary pain. She couldn't do this this morning. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Why are you crying? Because I served during the fire conference, but I almost wasn't able to serve. And it hurt so bad. And last time my husband was praying over it, and I didn't expect it today. But I received it by faith. <laughs> Your faith has made you whole. This is Asha, and she's been healed from mental illness and a spirit that has been tormenting her. Mental illness. Father, we thank you. It is broken now. It is broken now. It is broken now. Every single last one of you, out! 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 God bless her. 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 Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. Loose. 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 Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Every generational curse, I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. In Jesus' name. So Tanisha came, she had excruciating pain from pulling her muscle, and during communion, healed! Healed during communion! Come on! Yeah. Today. Your yes. ears were what? In February, my ears got damaged from a speaker blowing in the service here, and it's ringing ever since, and it got to where recently I was wearing earplugs because it would hurt my ears even, 
and today I feel fine. Today you feel fine. Reading airs and I'm fine. This is Mark. So Mark, Pastor Misty called out residual stroke pain. He could not reach behind his back. Show Apostle. How long ago? 13 years. 13 years. You couldn't do that? I could not. Do it again. Come on, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, there it is. New joy is coming. New joy. New joy. <laughs> New joy. Woo! There's something on this stage. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hi, this Quickly. is Antoinette. She was healed from arthritis pain, so now she can write her book. Amen. You can write your book. Praise the Lord. Father, I declare be healed now. Her faith has made her whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly. Okay, praise the Lord. This is Carla. Carla is a bank teller, and she has had sciatic pain that radiates down here and then also her shoulder, and it was called out. Veronica, Miss Veronica, prayed for her. It got hot, and it popped, and then she did what she couldn't do. Do it, Carla. Do it. Come on. This is Brittany. Brittany had nerve pain from childbirth. This is also a husband and a baby. Wow. Um, she's been healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. Her faith has made a whole. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for this right now. Right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He needs it. Touch in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray, use this child for your glory. Look up at me for a second, baby. Don't be shy. I just want to pray for you. I just want to pray. Can I pray for you? Just put your hand in my hand. Father, I pray bless this child. Bless this child in Jesus' name. There's such a call of God on this child's life. This is a miracle child. This is a child of promise. I just see the Lord touching you like... Um, the prophets of old. I see a prophetic name on the inside. Is it Malachi? Micah, close enough. Father, we thank you for using this child for a mighty prophetic work. In the name of Jesus. There it is. Micah Cole. Use Micah Cole for the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a prayer. Yeah. So this is Olivia. Olivia had dyslexia and anxiety, but it's gone now. Gone! Hallelujah! Lift your hands for me, honey. Is this... This is what? Oh, dear God. What's his name? Brandon. Father, we declare over Brandon, be healed in the name of Jesus. No residual pain. Father, we declare swelling goes down. We prophesy to dry bones, and we say dry bones be healed now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you for touching this one. Thank you for healing her. Thank you for uh, uh, touching every anxiety, every fear, every doubt. Thank you for using her for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus, Praise Lord. the Lord. Wow, what a wonderful time. Are you glad you came today? Come on, let's give the Lord one more big shout of praise.
are blessed people. Amen.